As India moves into a new phase with uh, the Make in India initiative of the government, one PSU that has moved into top gear is NSIC. And we are delighted to with, have with us today the CMD of NSIC, Sri Ravindranath. Welcome to the program. Thank you, ma'am. And double congratulations. You've been um, elected as the CMD of the year. Yeah, thank you. NSIC uh, celebrates its 60th birthday today. Yeah, we complete 60 years of our presence for the MSME sector. Mm -hmm. Being set up in 1955 has been a long journey, quite eventful, quite interesting. And uh, in the recent decade, I would say, a lot many things happening through our company for the sector. It has been a turnaround of the corporation, almost from a situation of obliteration where people said, why NSIC? To a situation where we become a mini Ratna and people say, why not NSIC? That's, that's quite amazing, a, a long journey where, uh, especially in the last uh, couple of years after you took over, that it's uh, moved into a 200 crore company. 20,000 crore. 20,000 crore company. I don't even know my zeros. <laughs> that's quite amazing, isn't it? Quite a success story. Yeah, if you look back, when we were around 2006, if I may say, mm -hmm. this company was hardly doing a business of less than 2,000 crores, mm -hmm. with almost about 935 people earning less than 2 crores as a profit, earnings per share of almost 68 pesa. Mm -hmm. But then, the same group of people with a few going out and a few coming in, this company changed gears, changed its focus, became, I would say, more professional, more customer friendly, reached 20,000 crores in 2015, earned a profit of almost 132 crores mm -hmm. with 881 people. People asked for more number of employees, we reduced them and still achieved more. We trained our people. Okay. We conduct our management development programs and even programs for the lower rung of our employees in the C and D category. Uh, so that everybody is put through that. Mm -hmm. They know where the company is going. They know what are the schemes, how they have to be operated. And that is where the clarity comes in, the transparency comes in. And when you are transparent in your operations, there are no hiccups. What are the functions uh, really of NSIC? I would say, if I may quote one of the consultants who did the restructuring of ours, they said NSIC is a complex organization. Mm -hmm. Rather, many organizations rolled into one. So if then look at this definition, then you will see that what we do, we do a hand-holding, we do a facilitation of a small enterprise into every area. Mm -hmm. We broadly confine these areas into four categories, the marketing, the technology, the credit, and the support services. Now, when we look at marketing, and you just mentioned in the inaugural thing, make in India. How does make in India happen if you do not strengthen the competitiveness of the Indian MSMEs? You strengthen their competitiveness by en enabling them to get the raw materials at the competitive prices. Mm -hmm. What we worry today is China steel dump kar raha, China ye material dump kar raha. Hum yehi sochte rehte hain. पर ये नहीं सोचते हैं कि अपने लोगों को कॉम्पिटेटिव कैसे बनाएंगे कॉम्पिटेटिव mm -hmm. बनाने का एक इनपुट है उनका रॉ मटेरियल छोटे उद्योगों को कभी भी रॉ मटेरियल बल्क मैन्युफैक्चरिंग की प्राइस पे नहीं मिलता ट्रू उनको बल्क मैन्युफैक्चरर कहता है कि आप जाइए डीलर या मिडलमैन के पास यू गो देयर गेट द क्वांटिटीज बिकॉज़ वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू सर्व यू द स्मॉल क्वांटिटीज दैट इज वेयर एनएसआईसी स्टेप्स इन वी एग्रीगेट देयर रिक्वायरमेंट्स when we aggregate their requirements, then on the other side, we go to the bulk manufacturers. Well, we'll get you this much of quantity order. Will you give us? Mm -hmm. So they do give us. And we get the prices which the bulk manufacturer charge to the small enterprise. So the middlemen and the dealers are eliminated. The supply is assured. 
and over and above, as they call the icing on the cake, we get them the quantity discounts. Okay. If we do that, at least there is 10 to 15 percent of cost advantage, which a small industry does. Mm -hmm. This is only one small beginning which we do. NSIC provides marketing support to MSMEs. NSIC has a single point registration scheme for government purchase, wherein registered units get purchase preference and other facilities in government purchase program. Tender and consortia marketing is a scheme that involves forming consortia of units manufacturing the same products to ease out marketing problems while processing large orders. Through B2B web portal for marketing, NSIC helps small businesses to improve their visibility and increase their business. Then, having made the product, where do they go? How do they sell? There's another element which the government has introduced, which is public procurement. 20% of the purchases which a government department or an agency has to do needs to come from small enterprises. That is where we have vendors created by us. We register these small units and get them those tenders by participating on their behalf. Right. The value we register, it's a third party inspection which is done. So everything is very clear, very transparent. A third party certifies what is the capacity and competence of this unit. NSIC evaluates the company by visiting it, finding its financials to be in order and gives a certificate. This certificate gets the benefit of earnest money exemption, price matching up to 15%, tender sets coming free of cost. Again, the capacity and the competence of the units get enhanced. When small units cannot do something on their own, we make consortiums of them, okay. bringing them together. You know, it's almost like bringing competitors together, which is very rare. Har kisi ko chinta hoti hai ki mera ye technology chhin ke le jayega, mera pricing chhin ke le jayega. But still, we endeavor to bring these people together. Last year, 2014-15, we had almost 110 consortiums which we made. And this year, up to July, or June, I think, 25 consortiums we have already made. We are participating in tenders on their behalf and getting tenders for them, which we are giving it to them. Mm -hmm. So that is the marketing concerns. Then we take them to exhibitions, hold exhibitions for them, sector-specific ones and other ones. NSIC also organizes buyer-seller meets, wherein bulk and departmental buyers enrich the knowledge of small enterprises regarding terms and conditions, quality standards, and other buyer expectations. NSIC creates opportunities for small businesses by organizing national and international exhibitions and technology fairs. Another issue which they find difficult is the credit. Right. Paisa nahi hai. Hmm. Most of the industries go flat because money is not there. If they have the money, the supplies have been made, they don't get the money in time. Hmm. So that is where to get the raw materials, we make payments on their behalf and get the materials on credit for them. So what kind of interest is involved in this? I would say we are the most competitive and the most reasonable ones. We charge 11.70 to 12.70. Now the band which we give is to get advantage for those units who have been rated under performance and credit rating scheme. Okay. This is another scheme which NSIC introduced and the government adopted NSIC as the nodal agency to do it. Units are rated by leading rating companies, Crystal, Ikra, Kea, Fitch, Smera, Onikra and all the like. Mm -hmm. And based on the rating they get, they get advantages of rate of interest, which even NSIC gives, the banks give. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of performance, they have the advantage that they become accredited vendors for certain uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. So that's how we do it. But then we thought our funds were limited. Res requirements were big, massive. But then what we did, we went to the banks and said, we'll mobilize the proposals for you. We'll give it to you. You lend it as per your lending norms. Mm -hmm. We will not charge anything from a small enterprise. But once a bank gives it, we will share the processing fees from them. Okay. Today we have 31 banks and financial institutions for whom we mobilize the proposals from small enterprises mm -hmm. and give give them. The small enterprises stands to gain because we do not charge anything. 
we help them in preparing the forms as per the requirements of the bank and in turn there is no limit it could be as low as 5 lakhs 2 lakhs 10 lakhs recently we got a proposal sanctioned worth 75 crores so that is the range on which we work upon there is no limit on the value there is no restriction on the nature of credit it could be cash credit it could be non fund based limits it could be term loan it could be anything so when a person comes to you now that we talk about um, uh, you know creating jobs rather than asking for jobs that the prime minister has been talking about so when somebody comes to you uh, does he have to come to you just with an idea when it comes to entrepreneurship creation mm -hmm. it could be something like that mm -hmm. and for that we introduce the new scheme of ours called rapid incubation for entrepreneurship development let me tell you incubation as a concept world over is very different from the concept which we introduced right world over when you talk of incubation you normally talk of giving some space where a person with an idea will come and start working he succeeds or he doesn't it's up to his will power or his idea but then we thought india has a different problem at its hand if i may say it's a problem it's a challenge it's a challenge mm. uh our prime minister very strongly says when he talks about the three d's one of the d's he mentions is the demographic dividend right it's truly an advantage today because we are a very young country it is going to remain till one of the reports says till 2040 mm -hmm. and uh, but it's a challenge if we do not address this issue of the youth getting them jobs or getting them employment opportunities mm -hmm. or creating self employment opportunities for them that is where we thought why not create self employment opportunities for them and these are uh, these are youth who are not necessarily uh, highly educated no, or no, 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 professionally no. educated see if you go into the statistics of our country right majority of our population the young population mm -hmm. would not even have passed the middle that is true and i was truly amazed when i recently read the amount of graduates and above is perhaps in single digit or early double digit mm -hmm. so when you have that sort of a population on hand so you have to think of something which is really we carry mm. and we carry in a rural areas thinking of places like delhi or mumbai or chennai and things like that is a different ball game mm. but we have to look at people who are staying in the rural areas and if you have to stop the inf influx you need to address something for them that is where we started this incubation concept where we have small technologies paper napkin making socks knitting soya milk plant bread and biscuit making mm -hmm. tailoring outfit beautician your mobile repair your laptop repair grinding packaging there are about over 250 projects which we have and we give them as per the requirements of a particular area looking at the raw materials which are available over there mm -hmm. that is where even if a student is 10th pass or not pass has an aptitude can sign we bring them we invite through applications we bring them to these incubators of ours train them through a structured training program of 3 months nsic uses its country wide network of offices and technical centers to set up training come incubation centers by the time the 3 months are over we invite the bankers also for those of the students who would like to have their own uh, project become entrepreneurs we help them in preparing a bankable proposal through these bankers who will guide them we submit their proposal and the advantage is nsic students get also preference under pme gp which is the government scheme for subsidy to such uh, and new entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so this all has which we started today is literally catching up like wildfire we have i think seven or eight of our centers 97 under public private partnership mode mm -hmm. but those in the offing uh, those which are required are fabulous most of the state governments when we inform them as this is what we can do they wanted itne center hamari state mein laga dijiye itne hamari state mein laga dijiye you know that is what is beginning to happen mm -hmm. and we are being tested what capacity do we carry not only in india recently we have been setting up these centers abroad 
on behalf of government of india the mea wanted under the bilateral relationship as well as on commercial lines with various foreign countries mm-hmm. we work countries such as south africa mm-hmm. if you happen to be in south africa you will say it's the europe of africa mm-hmm. but still they also have the, popul- the population problem mm-hmm. they have a huge large sector but hardly any small scale sector right. so if you have to create new enterprises you need something on those lines then we worked with the uh, senegal and we worked with the senegalese military that their ex servicemen should be trained on these things so that they can go back when they cannot join the army again they can set up their own enterprise and earn a living so we set up for them and now they are inviting that we should come there and set up another six centers mm. for them similarly we have done it in rwanda in ethiopia in burundi we are going to do it in zimbabwe in uh, burkina faso and recently i was in bangladesh mm-hmm. meeting people because the indian high commission also wants that one such center should also be set up for the bangladeshis but when we went and explained what it is and how it can benefit because bangladesh also has a very young population mm-hmm. when they want what they spend they saw the merit of it one of their institutions has come forward and said we would like to have 10 such centers in our country and in sic to assist them mm-hmm. so it is literally you know what our honorable minister says from berozgar to swarozgar mm. or what we translate in ling- in english and say from unemployment to self employment and anybody who does it will naturally be creating jobs suppose i set up a bread and biscuit making machine i'll be creating an employment opportunity for at least 3 or 4 if not more somebody will be helping me in, in all those activities that is how in the rural areas you happen to create job opportunities for those who cannot fathom for themselves that's uh, that's really fantastic work that nsic is doing we'll talk a little bit more about it but before that let's take a short break we'll be right back <laughs> Welcome back. We are in conversation with Sri Ravindranath, the CMD of NSIC. Uh, before going into the break, we were talking about how uh, NSIC is being um, branching out into various other countries, and then you also mentioned how uh, you know you find the kind of industry that uh, is suitable in a particular region. For example, you talked about the bread and uh, biscuit industry. Now, the thing about something like this is these are perishable items, so the chain. um of sale to uh, say uh, an urban center where they would be sold has to also be maintained so there would be a refrigeration for example that is required uh, are those things also that you look into see most of these projects which we normally encourage right. are those which would be produced and consumed quickly yes. so there would not be much of a storage issue so that has to be uh, consumed locally locally right because uh, i'm sure every village or every rural area yeah. has a consumption for bread has a consumption for biscuits mm-hmm. has consumption for even uh, other things maybe uh, your uh, um, puree which is made out of tomatoes mm-hmm. your other ginger paste or garlic paste and all those things if you are able to consume it within those areas and pack them in a manner which remains for some time naturally you can create a market mm-hmm. so we do not basically create to the problems by asking for those which have to be refrigerated or anything rather we encourage those which have a quick market mm-hmm. somebody can make it and sell it in the local market and even when we look at delhi whenever we happen to be in the market suppose we buy biscuits we are very often are being told well saab ye naya biscuit ka aaya hai aap dekhiyega ye bahut acha hai mm. so we are tempted to you know have a, a taste of that right soya milk anybody who manufactures soya milk people who got trained they started making it mm-hmm. and they have set up their own brand and uh, health clubs people are getting so health conscious mm-hmm. that they want soya milk rather than the other milk right courtesy all the television channels when you come to know how the milk is being made 
people prefer to go more for soya milk rather than the other milk so um, since you mentioned soya milk in, uh, we know that uh, the milk can create lactose uh, intolerance in many people a lot of the foods that we now see uh, in the main markets are uh, laced with the preservatives and they are not necessarily organic so is this also part of uh, uh, your endeavor to ensure that uh, you know food is more organic or materials used up your well uh, we definitely make it a point that the standards are being maintained right uh, even not only in india even when we went to senegal and made the all the, and the projects which we gave to the senegalese military mm -hmm. let me tell you they were what they were peanut paste peanut oil peanut butter mm -hmm. they have huge quantity of mangoes and big mangoes so mango pulp tomato puree things like that we did not leave the, their country till we ensured that whatever is the output is as per the international standards Okay. that's a part of the thing plus to get rid of all these things we normally encourage the local produce being there so that when you have it straight from uh, the production place mm -hmm. the farms to the manufacturer or where we process them it's always good like northeast has a lot of uh, what you call produce of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. so we encourage all these things they have a lot of ginger so in the new things which we are going to set up over there we are going to take advantage of the local raw material by way of the fruits and vegetables which would be available so they can be um, either pickled or yeah, made into yeah, jam absolutely, or something yeah absolutely absolutely now the other thing that uh, people talk about is how uh, you know people who are differently abled also need to be incorporated uh, into self employment where they can look after themselves uh, is there any such scheme that you look into we are beginning to look into their requirements also mm -hmm. of late there has not been much because when we started this we basically looked at the big scenario the big mm -hmm. picture the the youth who really requires all these things it is not only the youth i would say it is some of those who are employed with people who would like to have their own uh, maybe workplace to mm -hmm. work in mm -hmm. we help them but then all these people who are differently able challenged we would definitely be now exploring things which can be done mm -hmm. but let me also mention one of our technical centers at hyderabad teaches electronics to deaf and dumb people through the sign language our uh, one of our employees has been trained in this aspect he is a president gold medal winner and uh, we teach these people through the sign language mm -hmm. and That's it's amazing. a great success we have got in that mm -hmm. what about women how do you bring women into the uh, well uh, women are those which so far i have found to be the maximum beneficiaries okay. especially in northeast i see if i may say during the last 3 years almost 450 successful entrepreneurs have been created out of those who got training with us at the incubation center we have in guwahati majority of the females mm -hmm. even at other places like we uh, let me share with you kolar is one set place where we have a small center kolar was once one in time a gold mine area mm -hmm. and now it's almost a sleeping town we encourage the local housewives to come out and do some trainings so that they can set up their own enterprise that is where now we have these ladies who got training with us running their own boutiques okay so it's a game changer the rapid incubation of nsic has helped many incubatees to start their own micro enterprises in various parts of the world success stories are small but growing creating a big impact in the society what about certain areas like um, you know many parts of north india where uh, societies are more conservative women are not um, allowed to move out and yet they need to on their bread and butter So are there any kind of orientation programs that you have or? It's more of uh, awareness programs which we conduct Right And uh, at certain places let me tell you the 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 approach mm -hmm. is very different like we'll go to a mosque and after the prayers we'll try and gather those people or go to a church or go to a temple or go to a gurudwara after the prayers we just aggregate them congregate them and tell them the advantages of getting training from our centers when you walked into nsic it was let's put it bluntly or uh, not doing so well it was bimar almost 
Uh, what is it that you came with? What was that uh, vision that you came with that uh, brought about this change? I always carried that confidence that this company will bounce back. What gave you that confidence? The sector. Okay. When I looked at the sector, what is the biggest challenge for any enterprise? Mm -hmm. Do you have people who will use your services? If you have that sector in front of you, then what else do you require? You have only to work upon your systems, the company's systems, mm -hmm. the company's people. If my people were at crossroads, we had to show them the path. If our systems were obsolete, we had to bring them to the modern times. So that confidence I always carried. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was very passionate about my company, which I remain even today. Mm -hmm. So that is from where we started the turnaround. How do you keep your employees motivated? Which is usually the problem with most uh, uh, PSUs that uh, there is a lack of motivation. The biggest motivating factor mm -hmm. in our corporation is the annual conference. Okay. Where people vie with each other to go there. And only the performers come. Oh. And the amount of significance which every employee who performs gets from the CMD, from the top management, mm -hmm. it's, I would say, unparalleled in public sector where the CMD himself attends the program mm -hmm. for all four days, becomes a part of them. It's very rare where, where I can put my hand on somebody's shoulder and say, how are you doing? How is your son doing? How is your family doing? What are your plans? So when they become one with me and I become one with them, that is where it becomes as an NSIC family. So that is where you get rid of the hierarchy and absolutely, uh, there is no absolutely. protocol. I, if I have 900 people today, I would be knowing 850 by name, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, so that I can tell them, if I can applaud them, I can also reprimand them. Mm -hmm. And they will, they know that if we get the applause, if we don't perform, the reprimand is going to come. But that's few and far. Mm -hmm. It's largely the applause because most of us are doing well. Besides being hopeful and uh, with some sort of a work plan, you also had to be very courageous. Well, I traveled a lot. Andrew. I traveled to every nook and corner of the country. Mm -hmm. I travel to be with my people, to tell them that I am part of you, and as long as we are together, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. I had the clarity of the whole operations because being a finance man, I was looking after the financials also. I know what can be done, what cannot be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, since largely our operations were relating, having linkages with finance, mm -hmm. you give raw materials, you know what interest you have to charge, what service charges you have to charge. So we knew how they have to be rolled in. Mm -hmm. So when I traveled almost across the country, that's how I came to know about 850 people by name. They also started believing in me. See, you have to lead by example. And when you do that, everybody follows you. This is what happened. Then whatever we decided in the annual conference, mm -hmm. in the first, uh, what you call a fortnight of the year, and then people know what they've got to do in the whole year. Naturally, they will be doing it. Mm -hmm. Now we have gone even a step forward where we do video conferencing with our people. Every month we talk to them. So what has to happen? What have you done? Is there any problem? And when uh, you become accessible to them, even if you might say the CMD has to keep himself aloof, mm -hmm. but then if CMD becomes a part of his people to address their concerns and give them the confidence, the battle is won. One other aspect of Make in India that the Prime Minister has been talking about is to predict what the future um, industry should be all about. Um, you know, what are the kind of skills, what are the kind of uh, uh, things that you will need in the future that we should prepare, start preparing for uh, from now onwards. So is there something that you're doing in, uh, in that uh, aspect? See, skilling India is right. another challenge. Right. And for that, we have our technical centers, mm -hmm. what we call the NSIC Technical Services Centers, the NTSCs. We have them, one in Delhi, another one in Rajpura, Aligarh, Havada, Guwahati, Hyderabad, Rajkot, mm -hmm. and Chennai. In all these centers, they were set up as prototype development training centers, but the prototype is things of the past, mm -hmm. history. Now, we are training people over there but the training has to be made which is in sync with the requirements of the industry so that 
whom we train get absorbed in the industry right if we train people and they don't get an employment there is no use training and creating a skilled workforce mm. which doesn't get a job so that is where we begin to train as per the requirements of the industry mm. we held a job mela in our okla campus this India. also has been one of your uh, innovations to hold job melas yeah see we have to get these people employed mm -hmm. so we have to invite the industry we, it is a, again the role of what we call a facilitator mm -hmm. we facilitate in training we facilitate in getting jobs and we facilitate in getting trained manpower right so that is the synergy which we try to build mm -hmm. and uh, everybody is happy in that 55 companies normally come to my delhi campus mm -hmm. 25 30 companies come to my hyderabad campus that's how we go on splitting now we are trying to get in touch with most of the leading public sector company mm -hmm. suppose there is a company which is into ship building and it requires welders so when we spoke to them they said we requ we require so many welders machinists this 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 can you train them for us mm -hmm. so again it's an opportunity which we need to seize get them the people who get who are trained and for the youth get them the training which is in demand because the job is there in the offing in this entire thing um where do you find your energy and your inspiration the people my colleagues mm -hmm. when i see that hope and the spark in their eyes mm -hmm. it really makes me work as many hours as they want me to be mm -hmm. and honestly speaking they have been the biggest motivators for me they carried that hope and trust in me and i could not belie them that is the only thing which i had in me which made me going though being a diabetic but still i carry immense energy i draw immense energy from them the biggest problem in public sector is people don't communicate right they don't open their mouth you tell them anything they listen they go back it's a yes sir mentality yeah, but then i had to break that mm -hmm. i had to make these people come out of their cocoons so what we did the evenings were all programs somebody singing somebody mm -hmm. performing so and everybody had to do it including you including the same thing Okay. so when you say when you have to be one among them you have got to perform so when we had to do that that is where people started coming out of it mm -hmm. and the first time we did it people literally jumped on the stage <laughs> because they found an opening to that and next time onwards you know you won't believe people used to come with those clips gotcha. to remember what they got to read out what they got to perform oh how wonderful and that is the euphoria which gets created mm -hmm. and if you have that there is no chance that the company would ever ever slide back well amen to that we do hope the company never slides back but there must be moments of pressure it can't be all easy all the time so how do you cope with that the best thing is that if you have a pressure mm -hmm. and if you are the leader you don't pass it on okay and i don't believe in passing on my pressure to my subordinates but in your personal moments what do you do the best is uh, take it smile look upwards smile mm -hmm. and tell god that you have given me this problem you will give you me the solution it. also so you're a man of faith absolutely mm -hmm. if i can believe in people mm -hmm. whom i work with the god almighty who has given me this position mm -hmm. would also give me a solution to every problem which comes my fault and that trust has taken me through so far So do you believe in god as a as an entity or um, um there is some superpower right which really takes us through everything mm -hmm. i believe in that mm -hmm. and uh, even if you are not believing in idol worship mm -hmm. there is some power which is there the word om if you chant by itself whatever religion you may follow there is something you after 5 minutes you begin to feel something happening in your body mm -hmm. so when it, it is that why do we have to get into those things which are immaterial absolutely so why not get into the focus because i believe life is too little let's not waste it mm -hmm. let's do constructive things and the end would be the best absolutely if you do constructive things uh, the end would be the best and um that's a wonderful note to end this program on thank you so much for being on our program today and sharing your vision of nsic and how you've turned it around Pleasure ma'am it was a pleasure talking to you thank, thank you, you.